The Trip to Öland Sunday, April 3rd The wild geese went out on a wooden island to feed. There they happened to run across a few grey geese who were surprised to see them since they knew very well that their kinsmen, the wild geese, usually travel over the interior of the country. They were curious and inquisitive, and wouldn't be satisfied with less than that the wild geese should tell them all about the persecution which they had to endure from Smirre Fox. When they had finished, a grey goose, who appeared to be as old and as wise as Akka herself, said, it was a great misfortune for you that Smirre Fox was declared an outlaw in his own land. He'll be sure to keep his word and follow you all the way up to Lapland. If I were in your place, I shouldn't travel north over Småland, but would take the outside route over Öland instead, so that he'll be thrown off the track entirely. To really mislead him, you must remain for a couple of days on Öland's southern point. There you'll find lots of food and lots of company. I don't believe you'll regret it if you go over there. It was certainly very sensible advice, and the wild geese concluded to follow it. As soon as they had eaten all they could hold, they started on the trip to Öland. None of them had ever been there before but the grey goose had given them excellent directions. They only had to travel direct south until they came to a large bird track which extended all along the Blekinge coast. All the birds who had winter residences by the West Sea and who now intended to travel to Finland and Russia flew forward there, and in passing they were always in the habit of stopping at Öland to rest. The wild geese would have no trouble in finding guides. That day it was perfectly still and warm, like a summer's day, the best weather in the world for a sea trip. The only grave thing about it was that it was not quite clear, for the sky was grey and veiled. Here and there were enormous mist clouds which hung way down to the sea's outer edge and obstructed the view. When the travellers had gotten away from the wooded island, the sea spread itself so smooth and mirror-like that the boy, as he looked down, thought the water had disappeared. There was no longer any earth under him. He had nothing but mist and sky around him. He grew very dizzy, and held himself tight on the goose-back, more frightened than when he sat there for the first time. It seemed as though he couldn't possibly hold on. He must fall in some direction. It was even worse when they reached the big bird track of which the grey goose had spoken. Actually, there came flock after flock, flying in exactly the same direction. They seemed to follow a fixed route. There were ducks and grey geese, surf scooters and guillemots, loons and pintail ducks and mergansers and grebs and oyster catchers and sea grouse. But now, when the boy leaned forward and looked in the direction where the sea ought to lie, he saw the whole bird procession reflected in the water. But he was so dizzy that he didn't understand how this had come about. He thought that the whole bird procession flew with their bellies upside down. Still he didn't wonder at this so much, for he did not himself know which was up and which was down. The birds were tired out and impatient to get on. None of them shrieked or said a funny thing, and this made everything seem peculiarly unreal. Think if we have travelled away from the earth, he said to himself. Think if we are on our way up to heaven. He saw nothing but mists and birds around him, and began to look upon it as reasonable that they were travelling heavenward. He was glad and wondered what he should see up there. The dizziness passed all at once. He was so exceedingly happy at the thought that he was on his way to heaven and was leaving this earth. Just about then he heard a couple of loud shots and saw two white smoke columns ascend. 
there was a sudden awakening and an unrest among the birds hunters hunters they cried fly high fly away then the boy saw finally that they were traveling all the while over the sea coast and that they certainly were not in heaven in a long row lay small boats filled with hunters who fired shot upon shot the nearest bird flocks hadn't noticed them in time they had flown too low several dark bodies sank down toward the sea and for every one that fell there arose cries of anguish from the living it was strange for one who had but lately believed himself in heaven to wake up suddenly to such fear and lamentation akka shot toward the heights as fast as she could and the flock followed with the greatest possible speed the wild geese got safely out of the way but the boy couldn't get over his amazement to think that anyone could wish to shoot upon such as akka and yxi and kaxi and the goosey gander and the others human beings had no conception of what they did so it bore on again in the still air and everything was quiet as heretofore with the exception that some of the tired birds called out every now and then are we not there soon are you sure we are on the right track hereupon those who flew in the centre answered we are flying straight to öland straight to öland the grey geese were tired out and the loons flew around them don't be in such a rush cried the ducks you'll eat up all the food before we get there oh there'll be enough for both you and us answered the loons before they had gotten so far that they saw öland there came a light wind against them it brought with it something that resembled immense clouds of white smoke just as if there was a big fire somewhere when the birds saw the first white spiral haze they became uneasy and increased their speed but that which resembled smoke blew thicker and thicker and at last it enveloped them altogether they smelled no smoke and the smoke was not dark and dry but white and damp suddenly the boy understood that it was nothing but a mist when the mist became so thick that one couldn't see a goose length ahead the birds began to carry on like real lunatics all these who before had travelled forward in such perfect order began to play in the mist they flew hither and thither to entice one another astray be careful they cried you're only travelling round and round turn back for pity's sake you'll never get to öland in this way they all knew perfectly well where the island was but they did their best to lead each other astray look at those wagtails rang out in the mist they are going back towards the north sea have a care wild geese shrieked someone from another direction if you continue like this you'll get clear up to rügen there was of course no danger that the birds who were accustomed to travel here would permit themselves to be lured in the wrong direction but the ones who had a hard time of it were the wild geese the jesters observed that they were uncertain as to the way and did all they could to confuse them where do you intend to go good people called a swan he came right up to akka and looked sympathetic and serious we shall travel to öland but we have never been there before said akka she thought that this was a bird to be trusted ah oh, it is too bad said the swan they have lured you in the wrong direction you are on the road to blekinge now come with me and i'll put you right and so he flew off with them and when he had taken them so far away from the track that they heard no calls he disappeared in the mist they flew around for a while at random they had barely succeeded in finding the birds again when a duck approached them it is best that you lie down on the water until the mist clears said the duck it is evident that you are not accustomed to look out for yourselves on journeys those rogues succeeded in making akka's head swim as near as the boy could make out the wild geese flew round and round for a long time be careful can't you see that you are flying up and down shouted a loon as he rushed by the boy positively clutched the goosey gander around the neck 
This was something which he had feared for a long time. No one can tell when they would have arrived if they hadn't heard a rolling and muffled sound in the distance. Then Akka craned her neck, snapped hard with her wings, and rushed on at full speed. Now she had something to go by. The gray goose had told her not to light on Öland's southern point, because there was a cannon there, which the people used to shoot the mist with. Now she knew the way, and now no one in the world should lead her astray again.